Welcome to the webinar, Measuring and Fighting Food Waste to Achieve Sustainable Development Goals 12.3. I'm Roberto Sofefa from the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock in Costa Rica. It is a pleasure to contribute as moderator in this webinar. This is the first webinar organized by the Sustainable Food System Program of the 10 Years Framework of Programs on Sustainable Consumption and Production. The 10-year framework of programs is a global commitment that was adopted at the Rio Plus 20 conference in 2012 in response to the need to, do, to accelerate the shift towards sustainable consumption and production in both developed and developing countries. The Sustainable Food System Program is a global multi-stakeholder partnership. It currently counts with 120 members from all over the world, ranging from governments, companies, civil society, and academy. Together, those members collaborate, promote sustainability along all the food value chain from farm to fork. The program brings together existing initiatives and partnerships working in food related areas, highlighting good practices and success stories and building synergies as well as cooperation among stakeholders to leverage resources toward mutual objectives. The main goal of the program is to support countries for, to achieve more nutritious and sustainable food systems for all. The Sustainable Food System Program focuses on five themes. Reduction of food loss and waste is one of them. This theme is also incorporated in the target 12.3 of the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development Goals. Currently, third of all food produced globally is never eaten by people. The impact of this loose and waste worldwide is tremendous. Food waste is responsible for significant economic losses and greenhouse gas emissions annually. This has relevant efficiency losses in the agri-food systems, which is a condition that represents big challenges for the global society, as well as local, national, and regional scales. This webinar has the purpose to discuss about enabling environments and countries' capacity to combat and reduce food waste. It will present examples of efforts and initiatives that are being implemented by four different countries to meet target 12.3, focusing on their implementation mechanisms, success factors, and main challenges. The webinar is also an opportunity to show how the Sustainable Food System Program, through one of its core initiatives, is providing support to countries in the combat of food loss and waste. <clears throat> Before we start, I would like to recall a few tips for a smooth webinar. All attendees are on the listen-only mode. Attendees can send questions to the presenters anytime throughout the webinar by posting them in the question box of the control panel. When typing a question, please indicate to which presenter it is addressed. At the end of the webinar, during the question and answer session, I will be reading out the questions and the presenters will share their replies. If you need to contact the organizers for other reasons, for example, connection problems, please refrain from using the question box and use the chat box instead addressing your message to organizers. This webinar is being recorded. All participants will later receive the YouTube link with the recording of the webinar. Please do not hesitate to share the recording with your colleagues and networks. Having said this, we now move, move on to the first presentation. It is my pleasure to give the floor to Mr. James Lomax, who is the Sustainable Food System Program Officer at UN Environment and FAO, are the promoters. Sorry. Sorry, this, this first presentation is uh, by 
um, James Lomans, who is Sustainable Food System Program Officer at the UN Environment, and Ms. Camila Bukatariu, Technical Officer of Food Waste and, and at FAO. Both UN Environment and FAO are the promoters of the Sustainable Food System programs since the very beginning of the program proposal. James and Camelia, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes in total. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Roberto. Um, and this is now going to be a 10 slide presentation on the work that FAO and UN Environment are doing within the context of the 10 YFP Sustainable Food Systems Program. And Roberto, thank you very much for your introduction. So, next slide, please. As we know, food loss and waste occurs across the supply chain from farm to fork. And we know that there is an estimated one third of food lost or wasted, which is a figure that we have been talking about now for quite a while, since about 2011, when FAO did their landmark publication um, during mm -hmm. that time. Um, but there is always, but, but, but there's also a marked difference between food, food that is lost and food that is wasted. If you look at the figure on the slide here, you can see that um, many of the, um, uh, that, that there is a distinct difference between food that is lost and food that is wasted, depending on where it's actually happening. So if we have a look here, we can see that Europe, North America has very much more food waste at the consumer level. And if we look at um, food that is lost, which is due to um, food that, that never reaches any kind of market stage due to the fact that it is uh, due to infrastructure issues, that is more of an issue in less industrialized areas in developing countries and areas like sub-Saharan Africa. So um, we understand, therefore, that, 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 this, is a, that this is a very uh, disturbing phenomenon. Um, and we also understand that, that, that food that is lost and wasted also has an incredible impact on food security and also on environment. So, for example, if all countries, um, uh, if, if, if um, that, that food loss and waste in developed and emerging economies contribute directly to global hunger, all countries buy food from the same global market of internationally traded commodities and food that is lost or wasted is removed from the market and is therefore not available for other countries to buy. So by raising demand for these commodities, the prices paid globally, we can assume, can be impacted, which more or less could make them more or less affordable for poorer nations and consumers. And we also understand that there's a global environmental impact when it comes to food loss and waste, not least when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. And we recently worked out that the carbon footprint of food that is produced and not eaten is estimated at 3.3 gigatons of CO2 equivalent. So if that was a country, that would be behind USA and China when it comes to the biggest global emitters. But it's not also that, it's, it's also the, um, it's also the, the um, activities when it comes to all the, the, the resources that are embedded in the food that is lost. Uh, next, please. So we understand that food loss and waste contributes right across the SDGs, and this is a very good example of it. We've worked out that it contributes to 1, 2, 6, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16, and 17. Basically, what this slide does is shows us that this contributes a lot to the issues we have with our food systems. Next, please. To combat this, we decided that within the food systems program, we would start to put together a core initiative run by FAO and UN Environment. This is very much um, a, a, a group where, where, we're see, where we're seeking other players to join us, and we have four tasks. 
We wish to develop capacities and promote awareness and advocacy on the issue, take stock of the current state of knowledge and ongoing methodological activities, which includes measurement, that's mentioned in the next one, and really strengthen tools developed and address knowledge gaps in the area. Um, now I'd like to pass you over to Camelia, who will take you on to more detail of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, James, for uh, the introduction of our joint presentation. Indeed, today, um, today's webinar is an excellent opportunity to share knowledge and discuss on how to further the work on food loss and waste prevention and reduction. So I will start by introducing um, to uh, some of the tools of, um, of both FAO and UNEP uh, we have worked um, on and how these tools were already implemented in some of the countries uh, that are actively involved in, uh, in this work. First, I will start by the education of food waste prevention um, that FAO has uh, developed. It is a package uh, that was um, in uh, collaboration, was considered in collaboration with the International Food Waste Coalition that is representing uh, also members from the private sector. Um, by uh, this package, we have targeted uh, children from uh, five years to 14 years plus. Their teachers and staff uh, in the schools. And um, because it is a package that refers to behavior change and knowledge uh, and capacity for children, uh, we also hope that um, this will extend the impacts of the knowledge. It will extend also to their related families and networks. So the material produced uh, will uh, be available this year uh, in the public domain. It has different modules for the four age groups that were identified, starting from the from five years. Uh, to seven, the second group is eight to nine, the uh, third group is 10 to 13, and the fourth group is 14 plus. Uh, these materials can be used by educators for lessons, activities, and are highly adaptable. So the flexibility is key here, because each group and each teacher knows best for, for, the, for their own uh, needs. Uh, it's practical and has been already tested in schools uh, in Europe. So schools have been participating in reviewing the materials, reviewing the language, reviewing how the design of the identity of the heroes that are here uh, proposed for the children are, are being presented. So it is quite um, relevant to consider, for instance, that uh, when this is going to be available in the public domain, it has already gone through a review process that um, has been completed, and it is a review process that was um, multidisciplinary. Uh, I would like to proceed with um, the Think It Safe campaign uh, package of um, advice for consumers. In this uh, package that was developed by the campaign, we can see different kinds of um, information that the consumer can consider uh, to reduce the food waste at household level. However, we uh, well know, we are well aware that, that um, the consumer can be facilitated in uh, the choices that uh, he or she makes. But uh, what we can um, acknowledge also is that the um, retailer, so the step before the consumer, needs also to change. Therefore, the Think It Safe uh, campaign has also conducted research on how cosmetic standards are being considered. Um, all this uh, can uh, be under the um, chapeau of healthy and sustainable diets that uh, we also contribute towards. And as uh, um, James mentioned before, Food loss and waste is an issue that directly impacts climate. Therefore, FAO has worked on strengthening the linkage between food loss and waste and climate change. We have released this year publication, Save Food for a Better Climate. And I invite you to consult it for further details. So apart from national campaigns that were considered in Brazil, Costa Rica, Russia, um, and the publications here, 
The networks are also very important. Such networks can enable change. And in this case, Safe Food, the Global Initiative on Food Loss and Waste Reduction, has um, a network that also disseminates knowledge through a newsletter, a monthly newsletter. Next slide, please. All right. Apart from uh, education, awareness raising, and uh, strengthen, strengthening the linkages between the different um, issues that food loss and waste um, link with, we have also worked on developing methodologies and tools. In this case, specifically, FAO and UNEP has worked with WRI and all the members that were in, invited to participate for the um, development of the Food Loss and Waste Accounting and Reporting Standard. The standard has been launched as a tool, a practical tool that businesses can uh, use to monitor and report on their food loss and waste along their food supply chains. And uh, this tool has been already through a uh, thorough review process and through piloting. So some results on their um, on this tool specific implementation are already available. Be beside the uh, Full and Waste Accounting and Reporting Standard, uh, FAO and UNEP together with RAP has worked on the prevention and reduction of full loss and waste uh, for uh, small businesses and at household level guidance. It was released in 2014. It provides the first uh, global uh, guidance on this per uh, particular issue, and it has been tested and considered already in countries such as South Africa, for instance. Further, um, there is an issue with the um, slide. Maybe we can uh, have, have the slide uh, again, the same slide. Uh, further to developing the guidance, um, FAO, has focused on developing the methodology on food supply chain analysis. The food supply chain analysis methodology is a close look to how food losses occur along the food supply chains in developing countries. The methodology itself is not focused on developing more data uh, in a percentage of loss uh, in a specific commodity. It is focused on developing knowledge on how to address it when it is identified and what solution is technically, socially, economically and environmentally feasible. So here we can see a world map, a section of the world map uh, where some of the studies have been taking place. We are around 88 case studies now that are available. And later on in this year, we would like to uh, publish them in the public domain for, for countries to consider how the knowledge that this supply chain food um, losses analysis uh, can support decisions first at supply chain level, of course. However, because of the numbers now that uh, is available uh, in this case studies around 88, as I was saying, uh, it is po uh, potentially quite relevant a tool for countries to consider on how to work on their um, sector methodologies and also broadly speaking at national level. Um, so uh, as I have been mentioning, we have specific tools that tackle both waste and loss. Um, because we are talking about full loss and waste, and this is a global target, FAO and UNEP have also been addressing um, the, the um, monitoring and reporting towards the target at global level for SDG 12.3. In this um, area of work, the Global Food Loss Index indicator for the target 12.3 has been assigned to be addressed by FAO. And the target for food waste, uh, in this case, food waste indicator index has been in discussion and is currently addressed by UNEP uh, and, and their partners, FAO is contributing to the, to the discussion. Next slide, please. As I was mentioning, the, for the food loss part, we are working on identifying the critical loss points, the causes. Then we do a social, cultural, and gender analysis as well. And we are focused on identifying what solutions can be implemented at that food supply chain level. And further, if we scale up 
to the sector and the national level. Through this food system analysis, uh, we can and we have already been implementing and piloting solutions for evidence-based results. And we would like now uh, to work towards scaling up for impact. One of the key areas of impact that the supply chain level food loss analysis uh, allows is policy and regulatory de development. And this um, is, for instance, one of the key areas where the Rome-based agencies uh, program um, project that works on um, food losses and waste is working towards now from the year 2017 to the year 2020, policy and regulatory development for, co for a context-based approach. I will now pass the um, presentation again yeah. to James. And Let me interrupt you because we're yes. going quite, quite over time. So if we if we close it off and go through to the next two, All right. that would be great because I, I but uh, I yeah, we have been out sixteen minutes. Okay. All right. So I what I would like to highlight here um, is that the Safe Food Global Initiative of Loss and Waste Reduction, together with the Think It Safe campaign, have already launched online-based tools. One of these online-based tools is a global community of practice on post-harvest loss that is currently being implemented by IFAD, WFP, and uh, is hosted and uh, monitored um, and moderated by FAO. Uh, the next step now is to increase the scope and geographical coverage of the global community of practice on food loss reduction. Uh, the Think It Safe campaign has the web tool of the Think It Safe Reduce Your Footprint, where consumers, companies, all actors along the food supply chain can access current information, tools, and can share their knowledge on this. And the other platform that uh, was launched by FAO together with IFPRI is the G20 Technical Platform on Waste uh, Measurement and Reduction where the focus is, as the title, on measurement specifically for the target 12.3 and reduction of food losses and waste. We look forward in launching uh, the community of practice on food waste as well. I pass the word to you now, James. Hello. Right. So, um, it's, sorry. The the um, the thank you very much. But the the uh, connection that I have on my um, the, uh, my part of the webinar is not very strong. So, I'm not sure. So, can we move on to the next stage, please? The, the next slide, and then we'll wrap it up. So, so basically, um, this really wraps it up. It's to say that we have. Um, now, what's new is that we have two, um, that, that not only do we have the global food loss indicator that, um, that uh, Camelia was mentioning, but we also now have the food waste index. This is something that we've been working on since January 2018, and we're at a point now with FAO now where we really want to start to see where we can, first of all, see how it fits with the global food loss index. And, and also we're looking at how we can bring in all sorts of different experiences from all over the world to make sure that we bring together a methodology which is globally applicable, it's coherent, so it's co coherent not only to SDG2 types but also the other food, the other waste related indicators that exist in the SDGs, it's policy relevant and it's comparable and most importantly is that we engage with national statistical systems. So I'd love to give you more information about that once it becomes more live and once it becomes more concrete, that'll be in the coming weeks. So um, please uh, watch this space as we go further on this. Uh, next slide and I think we're done. Right, so we also have the global, um, we also have the output three on the community practice, but I think we've done that. So I think, next slide. And thank you and keep calm 
and think, eat, save. This is why why we're here. Let's make sure that we um, get rid of this terrible problem that we have that that's creating such an absurdity within our food and agriculture sector. Thank you very much. Over to you, Roberto. I'm sorry for taking so much time. Thank you very much, James and Camelia, for sharing with us the, the key aspects of this core initiative. We look forward to the question and answer session. Please, all attendees, you are invited to send questions to James and Camelia from now through the question box. They will be answering them during the, the question and answer session at the end of the, of the webinar. Now, uh, dear participants, it is my pleasure to give the floor to the next presenter. Ms. Elise Golan, who is Director for Sustainable Development at the Office of the Chief Economist of the United States Department of Agriculture. Ms. Elise is a very active member at the Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Committee of the Sustainable Food System Program. Elise, you have 10 minutes. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Roberto. First of all, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear okay, you, Elise. Great, great. Okay, so uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for inviting me to participate in this panel. It's a pleasure to be here with so many of my good colleagues who truly inspire me to keep working on this issue. Uh, time is limited, so I'm just going to jump right in uh, today. Next slide, please. I'm going to focus on what I think are the five key areas of policy targeted by the U.S. to reduce food loss and waste in the United States. Um, I need the next slide, please. So I'm going to talk about uh, the importance of setting goals, setting priorities, incentives, innovation, and education. So first of all, next slide. It's important to, to set back one, back one, back ones, yeah, back, yeah. It's important to set uh, national goals. And in September, nope, forward, <laughs> forward, one, there. Uh, in the United States, in September 2015, the U.S. Department of Agricultural Culture and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency announced the United States' first ever national food loss and waste reduction goal, calling for a 50 percent reduction by 2030. Now, this is essentially, as you see, the same as the Sustainable Development Goal 12.3. But by adopting it as a national goal, it gives it extra weight in the United States. It makes it more concrete for US policymakers and makes it a more important and powerful indication of our government's intent and commitment to reach that goal. So this was a very important first step for us in the United States. Second, next slide, a second important policy focus is to set priorities. And in the United States, we have a firm focus on the hierarchy of action to reduce food loss and waste. This hierarchy is surprisingly important. It provides a roadmap for developing a systems approach to reducing food loss and waste. And it keeps our efforts focused where they should be, at the top of the pyramid. Often when people or governments or organizations think about doing something about food waste, they first think about energy generation or composting or feeding it to animals. And they skip over the top of the pyramid, which is source reduction and feeding hungry people. These are the first things we have to think about when we think about reducing food loss and waste. To drive this point home a little bit uh, more dramatically, um, I like to use an example of myself in my home. And imagine I got up every morning and I created a, I, I started work first thing in the morning, creating a beautiful, delicious beef pot pie to feed my family in the evening. And that pot pie had a butter crust and beef that was fed, grass-fed beef and organic mushrooms and pearl onions and a wine sauce and it was fabulous. And every morning I made that, I made one for my family and I made another one that I then, half of which I fed to the dog and the other half I threw in the fire to heat the house. It's a terrible waste to spend those resources and that uh, amount of care in creating food for humans 
and then feed it to animals or for other industrial uses. It's better and more efficient for animals to feed them food that's designed for them. And it's better and more efficient to generate energy with efficient feedstock designed for that purpose. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need to divert food waste to other uses. Regardless how, of how successfully we are at source reduction and feeding hungry people, um, we will always have a need for um, also uh, feeding, taking some of that waste and, and feeding it to animals and composting and other uses. Okay, so this third policy focus in the United States has been to incentivize donation of wholesome food, wholesome excess food. So we're still staying at the top of that pyramid and we put a strong focus on incentivizing donation of healthy, wholesome food, excess food. The first thing we did is we passed the Bell Emerson Good Samaritan Act. And this act provides limited liability to businesses um, for donating excess wholesome food to people who need it. I'm happy to say that in the United States, no business organization or individual has ever been sued because food that they donated uh, made someone ill. We also have in the United States federal tax deductions that provide incentives to businesses to donate food. Not only do businesses then get some monetary financial reward for doing the right thing and feeding people, but we found in the United States that these, these, these tax benefits have helped to stimulate a birth of a whole new industry. And what happens is that businesses who want to donate food are often, it's very difficult, the logistics of getting that food to the people who need it. And new businesses have sprung up to take, uh, you can go back, to, um, uh, to split tax benefit with the donating business and take, take half of that tax benefit to fund the logistical support, the infrastructure, to actually get that food to food banks and pantries across the country. We also have in the United States, back one slide, Federal Food Donation Act, which encourages federal agencies and contractors to donate ex excess food. Okay, next slide. Third thing we focus on in the United States. Next slide, please. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, so that we also challenge private businesses and organizations do their part in their operations to reduce food loss and waste. EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency in the United States, started their food recovery challenge about 10 years ago. With this food recovery challenge, they work with businesses voluntarily to measure food loss and waste in the business operations and to work with businesses to reduce it and measure reduction. In, we also started about five years ago the U.S. Food Waste Challenge. This is a little bit more uh, loosely organized challenge, but it invites organizations, businesses, schools across the United States to add their voice and their momentum to reducing food loss and waste by telling everyone what they are doing. It is essentially a compendium of best practices of what businesses across the United States, organization schools, what they are doing in their own organizations to reduce food loss and waste. We also have really tried to our game here in the United States by issuing the, by starting the US Food Loss and Waste Champions 2030. These champions commit to reducing food loss and waste in their operations by 50% by 2030, essentially matching the U.S. national goal and the SDG 12.3 goal. We feel that by pulling in major businesses in the United States, uh, challenging them to set these commitments and these goals, we really can move forward in the United States to meet our national goals. Okay, next slide, please. Another policy area that we've spent, we've put a quite a bit of focus on is innovation. Uh, USDA invests uh, quite heavily 
and research on new technologies for reducing spoilage of fresh foods. These technologies could be something um, as innovative as new powders created from fruits and vegetables that are sprinkled on freshly cut produce to prolong shelf life. Or it can be new vacuum packaging that does um, prolongs life of beef and poultry products uh, so that we don't see as much waste of those high value goods. We also invest in creating new technologies and approaches for creating innovative products from wasted foods at farms and food processing. Of course, we all are uh, trying to do our part to eat those ugly fruits and vegetables, those excess fruits and vegetables that are grown. But often, innovation can make them even more palatable and we can get more of that good healthy product onto people's plates if we innovate slightly. Next slide. Next slide, please. Some of the innovations that have come out of USDA, US Department of Agriculture Labs, include uh, really great technology for drying uh, misshapen fruits and vegetables and turning them into a, like a fruit leather that has an incredibly long shelf life, of course. It has no additive su added sugars or preservatives or anything, and it's just pure fruit. Uh, that then we can ship to consumers across the country. And then also that has generated a huge business overseas for those um, air fruit bars that you see up there on your, on your screen. We also have a fun new um, flower that's created from a grapeseed flower coming out of the California wine region. And it turns out that that flower, well, first of all, you'd be surprised at how much of a how much uh, grape seeds are wasted, the little pits from inside uh, grapes when wine is made. Um, quite a lot of waste there, byproduct waste. And that flour that USDA has developed a technique for making flour out of that, that is quite nutritious. So not only can we take some of that waste, that food waste or that food loss and turn it into something palatable, we can actually turn it into something highly nutritious. Okay, next slide, please. Another area that USDA is focusing on is actually educating consumers. We know that consumers, as James pointed out, are responsible for most of the wasted food in the United States. USDA estimates that in the US, 21% of the food supply is wasted at the consumer level. And we know we'll only meet our goal if we uh, change the way consumers treat food. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so some of the, the, the things we've done in the United States recently is we've updated our fact sheet on food date labels. We know there's quite a bit of confusion among consumers about when they should throw away food. When is it no longer wholesome? And uh, quite a bit of confusion about what those date labels mean. So we've provided new guidance to consumers on date labels and are working with industry to um, uh, have a standard date labeling across the United States. We also have a food keeper app, something that consumers can just load up onto their smartphone uh, when they go into the grocery store or even use it at home to figure out, you know, how long can I store that turkey in the freezer or how long will it stay in the refrigerator? Provides people with good tips on storage. We know that a lot of food is thrown away needlessly because people don't understand storage. Next slide, please. We're also trying to educate uh, our, our consumers through um, our dietary guidelines to tell them, hey, the average consumer in the United States waits $370 on food a year. If you took that money and, on wasted food a year, if you took that money and actually invested it in your nutritious diet, just think about what a better diet you could afford. Next slide. We also, uh, in the United States, we're all about private-public partnerships. And the National Resource Defense Council has really led the way in the United States with our national campaign to educate consumers about food loss and waste. Um, they're working with a very glitzy ad council campaign to educate uh, everyone. We see their, their posters are now in bus stops across the country telling consumers, educating consumers about food waste. And they've always got very clever 
uh, tie-ins with some of the most popular children's movies. Right now, they have a great tie-in with Peter Rabbit, and I included the link there because I think it's a really um, clever and uh, cute clip. Next slide, please. We've also put up a really grand public-private partnership, a Further With Food website in the United States, and it's the Center for Food Loss and Waste Solutions. It is the central point where in the United States, if you want to know what's happening, um, what, what's happening across the country, who's doing what, what research is out there, you come to Further With Food and you get the compendium of what's going on in the United States. Next slide, please. And this was very brief and very quick, and I'm sorry I even went over a little bit. Um, but uh, for more information about anything I talked about, please go to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They have the website there, or the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency website. So thank you very much. I apologize for going a bit over. Great, thank you, Elise, for your contribution. Uh, as a reminder of, to all attendees, please send your questions to Elise through the question box. Uh, let's move on to the first presentation by Ms. Lucero Cobos, International Consultant on Food Losses and Waste in Colombia. Lucero, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, the Sustainable Food System Program for the invitation to participate in this webinar and um, be able to share with you the advances of Colombian government in the creation and strengthening of policy in order to prevent and reduce food loss and waste. Um, the next one, please. Okay, so food loss and waste are part of the 20 and 30 agenda, as we saw in the previous uh, um, presentations. And uh, food loss and waste are uh, related with five of the sustainable development goals, um, also linked to the sustainable of food systems. Since the adoption of these sustainable development goals in 2015, Colombia has included in its, in its national development plan 92 from the total of 169 uh, uh, targets. Of course, the goal concerning uh, the, food, the reduction of food loss, food loss and waste on, on sustainable development goal 12 uh, target 3. The next one, please. So uh, the, first, uh, the first food loss and waste study in Colombia was carried out in 2016 by the National Department of Planning. This study evaluated the entire food supply chain and revealed that almost 10 million tons of food are lost and waste per year in Colombia, which is equivalent to 34% of total annual food production. 22% uh, represent food and losses mainly due to the lack of both uh, adequate infrastructure in agriculture and also the application of best practices. 12% represents the waste food as a result of rejected food in supermarkets due to commercial standards and also consumer buyer and consumption habits. The next one, please. So in 2009, the Intersectional Commission for National Food Security, CISAN, for its acronym in Spanish, was created. Uh, this organism is integrated by several ministries and government, governmental organizations and is in charge of the implementation of the Food Security National Policy that was created in 2007, and the National Plan of Food and Nutritional Security, Security created in 2012. Uh, regarding the food loss and waste situation in Colombia and, all, and how to address this issue, an internal technical committee inside this uh, uh, intersectoral committee was created, and they are working uh, with several institutions in uh, the development of national guidelines on food prevention and reduction of, of waste. 
The next one, please. So, uh, in 2017, led by the National Department of Prosperity, FAO and ZISAN, and with the participation of public, academic and private institutions, the National Guidelines for Prevention and the Reduction of Food Waste were developed. Uh, this National Guidelines uh, considers uh, four strategic lines. Uh, the first one, agri-food and system governments, uh, food waste and loss uh, knowledge management, associativity uh, and participation of uh, the, all of the actors involved in the super chain agri-food and agri-food systems, and also infrastructure investment. All these um, strategic lines are addressed to uh, achieve the um, target uh, considered in sustainable development goals. 2 and 12. The next one, please. Also, uh, this uh, food loss and waste uh, subject is uh, currently uh, linking with other policies in the country. Uh, the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development is working in include this uh, food loss and waste uh, theme in the national sustainable production and consumption policy that was created in 2010 and the solid waste management policy that was updated uh, last year. Um, also, these policies are uh, related with the targets considered in sustainable development goals 12 and 11. The next one, please. Mm, in order to address this issue of food loss and waste and, and the, the results that uh, they were observed in the uh, first study in Colombia, uh, several programs and projects uh, are developed right now and, and were developed. Um, the first one is uh, FAO, is developed uh, as Social and Technological Innovation for Sustainable Agri-Food System Program. The national, uh, I'm sorry, this program aims to reduce urban and rural gaps through social and technological innovation processes and to generate increase and equity in access to goods and services within the framework of agricultural production. The National Department of Planning developed uh, uh, the Zero Waste Program in 2016. This is focused on the support of farmers for the development and application of best practices, as well as um, achievement on, on the investment in, on infrastructure and te new technologies. Uh, last year, uh, the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, together with the United Nations by Environment Program, developing, developed the project Sustainable Gastronomy. This project focused on the development of best practice for the restaurant sector in order to prevent and reduce food waste and also to reduce uh, solid waste production. These uh, different programs and, and projects were uh, addressed to, uh, for example, the, the first uh, two programs are addressed to the um, losses on uh, the two first stages in agricultural production and harvesting and processing. And uh, the last project was addressed uh, mainly to consumers uh, in restaurant and catering uh, establishments. The next one, please. Likewise, there is uh, there are um, other initiatives from non-governmental organizations, university, and um, private sectors entities like uh, the Association of Food Banks, which has developed uh, this um, set of product waste policy in 2015. They aim incentivize donation of food that could be potentially wasted at supermarket and food industry. Alpina Company has created a uh, its program, Buen Provecio, in English is like uh, Enjoy Your Meal in 2014, 
and is uh, the main object, uh, the main goal of this is uh, the recovery and donation of food products for human, human consumption. The, this company is working together with Abaco, the Association of Food Banks, in donation of, of potentially uh, um, food that is potentially going to waste. Um, the University of Externado de Colombia has created the Cell Hunger Observatory, where they work uh, with the analysis of different uh, scenarios, scenarios, factors, and all the actors involved in the entirely food supply change, and uh, to address several strategies in order to prevent food loss and waste. The next one, please. As a future programs on law, uh, Colombia is planning to approve the National Food Programs Against Food Waste. This one, this one was created in 2016. Right now, it's under review. Uh, the main object, uh, the main um, um, goals of this this uh, program are, for example, articulate and promote cooperation between different stakeholders from the food supply chain promote the adoption of best practices for food production and processing, uh, promote strategies aimed at guaranteeing efficient uh, of the food, food supply chain, and also is on the review the first anti-waste uh, law against hunger. Uh, we hope that uh, this law and this program will be uh, approved by the end of this year. The next one, please. Okay, um, through the results of the studies, programs, projects carried out, it has been observed that the main aspect for, for the success in prevention and reduction of food waste are the, the cooperation between different sectors, the cooperation among all involved actors in the food supply chain. Um, also very important, uh, the promote uh, of engagement and commitment of the private sector knowledge management, all about the food uh, loss and waste, and uh, communication and dissemination of the, all the, the information. And uh, I think this uh, is all. And thank you very much for your attention. And uh, OK. Thank you very much, Lucero, for your interesting contribution to the webinar. We look forward to the question and answer in the session. And for all the dear attendants, please send your questions to Lucero through the question box to be answered in the question and answer session at the end of the webinar. OK, now, now our fourth presenter is Ms. Daniele Kretz, Policy Coordinator at the Ministry of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality in the Netherlands. Danielle will be accompanied by a short intervention from Ms. Janet Smith's Food Security Office Officer at the same minister. Please, Danielle, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes for your presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto, and thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to uh, give this presentation. Also with us is uh, Mr. Erin Mathaus from the Dutch government. Uh, we would like to inform you and tell you about our Dutch policy on combating food waste in the Netherlands. Uh, the next slide, please. First of all, some facts and pictures. Um, the food waste in the Netherlands is uh, between 1.77 and 2.55 million tons. Um, per capita, that means around um, 152 kilos. So um, that is uh, quite a lot. And we've been putting a lot of effort in trying to reduce that amount uh, during the course of the last years. Um, but we haven't been very successful. Um, um, but we think uh, we are on a breaking point now and uh, we'll do better in the upcoming years. Uh, the next slide, please. Um, of these kilos, the uh, 41 kilo um, uh, is uh, wasted in the households. 
Next slide, please. And uh, our ambition is to have uh, the food waste by 2030, uh, as we have seen that uh, almost all the countries that uh, have presented here have the same ambition. Next slide, please. And um, the way we um, uh, want to reduce the food waste is by um, uh, apply a hierarchy in our policy. And uh, we have seen uh, this uh, model slightly different uh, from the USA. I think it's almost the same. The most important first step is that we prevent uh, food to, to become food, uh, to become waste. And then uh, we like to keep it in the human chain and use it for um, uh, human food. And if that is not possible, then only then we use it for animal feed. And if that is not possible, then we go to recycling, recovering, or disposal. Um, and we think uh, by applying this hierarchy, uh, there is a lot of um, uh, food uh, to, uh, to save. Next slide, please. Um, we have policy both to uh, the companies and also the consumers. Uh, but with the food waste uh, in the companies, we say that they are in charge and responsible to reduce their food waste. And the government, uh, we see ourselves as a facilitator and, um, and to set the, um, the, um, the conditions for them to, to be able to reduce the waste. Um, we have a close cooperation with uh, industry and uh, companies. Uh, we have since years an alliance on sustainable food waste um, and um, that alliance um, is full of uh, representations of uh, different companies and industry and one of the main things that we have accomplished with them uh, is that we have looked into food donation and we have been able to uh, save a lot of food from retail and other uh, chains um, to uh, distribute them to uh, food centers, um, and they are especially for uh, people that don't have too much uh, to spend during their uh, during their month, and they can get food there. Um, since recently, um, for like almost a year now, we have uh, a task force, circular economy in food, and that task force consists of uh, 25 companies, the government, our ministry, um, and some uh, universities and also some NGOs. And we have um, made a national agenda uh, in combating food waste. And we have presented this national uh, agenda only recently on uh, uh, the 20th of March of this year. And I think the um, the great benefit of this task force is that we are joining forces and so we are looking uh, onto the whole system. Um, like I said in the beginning of my presentation, uh, we have not been able to reduce food waste in the recent years. And that was because we only had our focus on an individual company or like on an individual chain. And what happens is that Although you are successful in this individual company or in this individual chain, um, you just sometimes uh, move the problem to another link in the chain. And what we're going to do with the task force is look at the whole system and uh, consider food waste as a systematic uh, failure. And we are very hopeful that uh, we will be able to uh, re uh, realize this very high ambition of having the food waste by 2030. Uh, we have four main action lines in this national agenda, uh, which concerns that uh, we are going to um, uh, monitor and show uh, what we are uh, doing. So um, uh, we uh, measure uh, and we act on those uh, information. Uh, the second line is to look into the change and change and then um, uh, focus on uh, business cases and on innovation. 
Um, and the third line is a line for the household. Um, we have come up with uh, a campaign, so to speak, uh, together against food waste. And uh, we are trying to involve as much companies as we can and also as much households as we can. And we use uh, the same uh, logos and the same slogan. Uh, so we think we have a much more, uh, much more impact. And we use social media for that. And uh, we also developed a very nice video clip. I haven't uh, included that in the presentation because it's in Dutch. Okay, next slide, please. Um, our government policy consists of uh, five main elements, um, one of which is the monitoring. Uh, I have already told you that uh, we're going to monitor with the task force, but this monitor um, has been in effect since 2009. We publish the results every year, um, but they are made concerned with um, the numbers of uh, food, uh, the, um, the waste and the new thing we're trying to do with this task force is also get the, the information from the company uh, itself. The second uh, element is public information and education, very important. Uh, we have a Dutch nutrition center and they give the public information about how to um, prevent food waste. They concern, they focus on three elements, and that is the um, buying of food, the preparing of food, and the saving of food. Um, they have a, a very nice website with very clear information on that. And they also spread the information um, throughout channels that uh, are close to the consumers. For example, uh, we have supermarkets who have um, uh, magazines um, in which there are recipes and all kinds of tips, and um, they make sure that the information goes into that magazine so that we have a broader reach uh, to the consumers. So that's just one example. Other things that they invent are very simple tools as a, a measuring cup. So you can measure your rice or your pasta and you don't cook too much. And um, those measuring cups are being um, uh, distributed uh, through the retails and the supermarkets. The, sec the third element, sorry, is gate marking. We find that about 10% of the food waste um, is because uh, consumers, but also companies, don't have a clear understanding of the date marking. Um, there are two different uh, um, types to to indicate if uh, something, um, uh, how long is something is going to last, and we find that it is confusing, and we like to make that more clear. Um, we also work together with the European Commission on that. Um, we have done several studies, and now we have a subgroup. Um, who is going to investigate which options are the most rewarding uh, to, to change. The fourth element is stimulating innovation and cooperation. Uh, innovation we find very important to, um, to come up with some clever ideas to reduce food waste. Uh, so we have a lot of research money for this uh, available. And the last element is the agenda setting in Europe. Um, as I said before, uh, we work together closely with the European Commission, uh, but the European Commission has established a platform on food losses and food waste. Um, wow. And all member states are a member of this platform, and we uh, come together twice a year to uh, exchange best practices, information, methodology, and um, to broader to broaden this further, uh, there are uh, specific um, uh, working groups, and um, in that way, we try to um, um, really get ahead in Europe. The next slide, please. Um, here you can see some of the things that are also going on in our country. Um, you can see uh, on the, the left-hand side above, uh, uh, those are soups. 
And um, those have been made in the waste factory. The waste factory is a factory in our country that uses um, uh, vegetables and fruit that no one else wants to have because they're perhaps ugly or don't um, look so so um, so smart, uh, but they're perfectly fine to eat. And they make really nice soups of this. And um, they're getting a lot of attention on this moment in the supermarkets. And consumers are um, um, ready to buy them even more and more. Um, on the right side of that, you can see a sticker uh, that you can uh, stick on your fridge. And uh, it tells you uh, what kinds of uh, food you have to keep in the fridge and what kind of food you don't keep in the fridge. And that helps consumers uh, very much because, frankly, some of the things I didn't know either before I had this job. Um, the, um, right next to that, you can see Instock. That is a restaurant that uses uh, leftovers for uh, in the restaurant because they're even so perfectly fine to eat. Um, this was about um, what I wanted to tell you. Um, and I give now the word to my colleague, Jeanette, to tell you something about um, the international approach. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? I hope so. <laughs> um, well, steps have been taken already to, to tackle food, wa food waste on a national Dutch level and also within the UE, AE, um, European Union. But uh, we must not forget that food loss and waste is much more serious in a lot of developing countries. Um, and uh, for, ex for example, 75%, uh, um, James already referred to that, James, 75% uh, uh, of all food is lost after harvest in, in Africa, for example. This is partly because of conflicts and climate change, but also because of the lack of infrastructure and technology to process all that food. And a lack of adequate agro, agro logistics is also um, part of the problem. Um, and of course, there you can you can take the adequate uh, storage and uh, it's missing uh, adequate storage and refrigerated transport. Well, uh, the Netherlands has a lot of knowledge to help solving this problem, which is also the problem of, of in food insecurity, of course, and that's uh, where I'm working on. Um, therefore, uh, our government, together with knowledge institutes and private sector, stimulates partnerships. Our private sector is playing an important role in translating the Dutch knowledge and skills. Joining forces with others, you can really make a difference. Not your own company or organization. Well, thank you, Daniela and Janet. Sorry for this uh, interruption. Thank you very much for your contribution to the webinar. Now, let's move on to the last presentation in this webinar by Ms. Catalin Machado, who is General Coordinator for Food Security and Nutrition at the Secretariat of Food Security and Nutrition in Brazil. Catalin, the floor is yours. Please be aware about 10 minutes presentation. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation and for giving this presentation. Yes, um, Brazil prepared a national strategy for the prevention and reduction of food loss and waste last year, which is currently awaiting approval by the Minister of Social Development. Well, this strategy was formulated by the National Inter-Ministerial of Food and Nutrition Security Chamber. This is an important governance space of the national food and nutrition security system. And it's composed only by ministry. And specifically for the topic of food loss and waste, an internal technical committee was formed. Next slide, please. Next. Uh, the technical committee was composed of 18 ministry food and agriculture organization, Safe Food Brazil, Social Service of the Commerce, SL Brazilian Association of Supermarkets of Food Industry, Brazilian Agriculture Research Corporation, and Brazilian Health 
regulatory agency. And here I would like to point out that the process of discussing this strategy was quite peculiar and innovative because for the first time the productive sector participated in a technical committee constituted by this interministerial chamber. Next, please. Next one, please. Okay. Uh, here you have a synthetic timeline. And as a first product, when with support from FAO, you were able to initially gather information from what had a red occurred in Brazil and to the present day on the subject. And from this survey established some important milestones in this trajectory. So this timeline demonstrates the beginning of important policies and initiatives for understanding even intervening the problem of food waste, such as the emergency of food banks, legislation approved and research development. It was, it was also worth noting that food waste is a matter of growing legislative interest on the part of the National Congress, in which in just uh, over three years, more than 25 bills were presented. And unfortunately, so far, no bill has been approved. This, uh, let's say, diagnosis is of fundamental importance for the construction of the national strategy for two reasons. First, it demonstrates the need for a mechanism to articulate the, the agenda as a result of multiple actors involved, multiple stakeholders, multiple perspectives to approach the problem. And the complexity of the problem for the Brazilian reality, once we identified that all points of the two chain, food chain are quite fragile, in which concerns the prevention and reduction of loss and wastes of food. And uh, the second reason, because it enables us to clarify why the strategy incorporates the national system of food and nutrition and security. And um, for me, this is the most important axis of the strategy, and that, in fact, is a primacy and guides the whole strategy. Next slide, please. So, uh, the main primacy of the strategy is that it's aligned with the system, which means that it should be aimed at expand the population's access to healthy food. It means that food waste from commodities may be important, but is not a part of this national strategy. Next one, please. Very well. So the general goal proposed by the national strategy is coordinate actions direct to prevent and reduce food loss and waste in Brazil through a more integrated and intersectoral management of initiatives from the government and society align with the national food and nutrition policy. Uh, here are the specific ones, goals, but I will not read all of them, so can you move on, please? Next one, please. In order to achieve this object, it was proposed four axes of action. For each axis, were initially systemized the advances and gaps. A later one proposed the lines of action. So from here on, I will highlight the main lines of actions proposed in each axis. Next one. Um, in the research, knowledge, and innovation axis, two main lines of action stand out. The first one, uh, perhaps this is the main challenge, that is elaborate a methodology to quantify food loss and waste in demand food chains in productive terms and to the contribution for a better food and nutrition and security. And also foster research development and technological innov innovation I mean, to understand the causes of food loss and waste and to propose solutions. Next, please. The main lines of action in the education and communication access were promote networks and virtual platforms related to the team 
and support and promote education campaigns. Uh, as well as training technicians from AXIS and, and Hurio extension for action in critical points of the food chain. Next, please. The next act refers to the promotion of public policies. In this axis, there are 10 proposed actions. The ones I would like to highlight at the moment are strength the Brazilian network of food banks. Consider that in Brazil, we have kind of 112 public food banks and another 112 maintained by non-profit organizations. As well, encourage voluntary public and or private sector agreements and promote infrastructure and logistics improvements at all stages of the food chain. And the last axis refers to the legislation. Next slide, please. Consider that we have many proposed bills, none with approval by the current Congress. It has been defined as priorities act together with the National Congress to approve a law that establish a policy to combat food waste and modifying existing existing legislation in order to encourage the donation of food to the food banks. Uh, similar Good Samaritan food law as we have in the US. So to conclude my presentation, it remains to be said that the tech, next slide please. It remains to be said that the technical committee that elaborate the national strategy proposed the creation of uh, a managing committee in order to support and monitor the actions need for the operationalization of the intersectoral programs or plans related to food loss and waste. And possible, the first step of this committee will be to prepare a work plan for the implementation of the strategy based on the action access. So, Right now, we are currently expecting the strategy to be approved by the new minister who has not yet been appointed, but as soon as this happens, I believe this will be approved. And then you can start the work of the management commitment. So, um, okay, that is it. Next slide. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Okay, thanks, uh, Kathleen, for your contribution. Sorry for the interruption at the beginning of your uh, presentation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we have to move to the question and answer session. Uh, James, we have a question for you. Uh, James, how and in which time frame the data from the member state should be reported to FAO or UNEP uh, will there be a form to fill out or will specific data from statistics will be taken at the food loose ways index calculated by FAO and UNEP? James, please uh, try yeah, to be sure okay. in order Thank to... Thank you very much. So, for the food waste... Can you hear me? Yeah, so, so for the food waste in index, we have to see how that's going to be collated. What we're looking at is we're looking at how we can engage with national statistics offices who can then start to uh, glean the data themselves um, and therefore we would be using then the STG reporting mechanism that is in place right now. Um, so that would be how we would do it from uh, the national level. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that would be the same with the food loss index as well. Um, as we're using, we would like countries themselves to, to start to collect, to collect the data and to make it available uh, so that we can start to monitor these things. And yes, th th and, and then there would be an interface a connection then between um, the UNEP, uh, UN Environment or FAO, depending on whether it's food loss or food waste, and then we would then collate the data. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, James. Now the turn is for Elise. Elise, two questions for you. Is there any work happening to embed education on food waste reduction 
at the purchasing level. The second is such as through mess messaging at the retail level, changing multi-buy promotions, more, more information or packaging itself. Oh. oh, Roberto, would you mind reading those again? I'm sorry, I didn't really catch the, the first one in particular. Yeah, the first one. Is there any war happening to embed education on food waste reduction at the purchasing level? Did you catch me? Right, yes. That would be uh, a number of private grocery store chains and manufacturers have taken that on to some extent. Um, grocery stores then offering, like you see in Europe, bins of ugly fruits and vegetables and telling consumers to um, uh, please, you know, choose these. They are totally tasty and healthy. Um, also, grocery stores, it's not consumer uh, facing information. Grocery stores are, of course, doing their part by taking some of the produce that is no longer as beautiful as it once was and creating products that they then sell in their deli sections or their salad their sections of the stores. And of course, there's a lot of donations to food banks. Um, and the second question. Okay, thank you, Elise. Okay. Now, Camilia, Camilia uh, would you like to add something to the questions to Jane? Camilia? Okay. For Lucero, please. Uh, most countries have Sub-Saharan Africa uh, have the challenge with collecting reliable up-to-date data on measure and monitor post-harvest loses data and report. Based on your experience in Colombia, Colombia, what is critical in establishing information and knowledge uh, management system that promote and support post-harvest management interventions? Okay, so, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, what is critical? So, right now, um, there is uh, several issues about uh, best practices in agriculture and uh, also um, innovation and investment in infrastructure. Uh, that's why Colombia uh, have this uh, big amount of food losses. Uh, and, but I think uh, the critical uh, issues here is that uh, there is a lot of information that is not uh, right now quantifying about these food losses. Uh, in the first study, it was evaluated the, the agricultural losses and post-harvest, but uh, was uh, made uh, through interviews and uh, not quantifying data as well. So we need the first to uh, manage to quantify all these food losses through uh, several methodologies and uh, in order to uh, propose different interventions. Okay, thank you, Lucero. Now, Camilia, I want to, to add something to James' questions. Okay, well, let's continue to Daniel. Daniel, there is growing number of uh, part participatory low tech initiatives across Europe uh, that encourage food sharing practices by redistribution of surplus food, such as food sharing platforms, public uh, fridges and apps. What policy action could be taken to support such citizen driven food sharing, uh, food sharing network of food waste reduction? Daniel? Well, I will answer for Daniel because he has left okay. uh, the building Perfect. already. Perfect. Uh, Every Madhouse uh, is speaking. Um, 
the question is what could uh, what kind of policy uh, yeah what what uh, what policy actions could be taken to support such citizen driven food sharing networks or food waste reduction well first of all i think that it is very important um, that you don't uh, those initiatives and those initiatives are very good um, but uh, we have to be sure that the food that is collected etc is safe to be, uh, to be eaten and that is a very important uh, issue in this uh, case so uh, for instance uh, we have the date marking uh, etc uh, it has to be sure that it's all all the food that is collected and shared is safe to eat Okay, perfect. Does that answer the question? Yeah, well, I think it's a, it's a good answer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And now, no more questions? Yeah, we have a, a question to Catalan. Catalan, could you provide more details about the law for fostering food donation? Will there be an obligation for cooperation between business and food banks, or is the law more directed to easier regulations on uh, hygiene or liability? At this time, we don't have a law that uh, simulate food donation. Uh, actually, our our, um, we have 25 bills, 28 bills that are proposed on the National Congress, but none one has been approved. <coughs> so I can't, this is all that I have to say because I don't have a law yet. Okay, perfect. Now, Camilla, are you in line? Hello, Camilla. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear Camilla. me now? Can you yes. hear me now? All yes. right. Thank you very much. So, indeed, I just um, I would like to add the, to what James has replied for the Global Food Loss Index and the Global Food Waste Index. On the side of the Global Food Loss Index, we work with the countries based on the food loss in agricultural statistics. So the countries have already in place the system through which they can work on food losses. And this system is the food balance sheets that uh, countries have already in place. So I invite, um, I invite the countries to consider how uh, we can work together uh, to have better data for food losses through the food balance sheets. So in the case of the food loss index, the system uh, is already in place and we need to work on the methodology on how to gather data to clarify which data um, uh, are going to be gathered and then how to monitor and report on it. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, no, no more questions. And uh, well, uh, as moderator, uh, another question? Oh, good, good. Another question to Elise. Uh, Elise, when you consider food waste as animal feed as third step in the reverse triangle, how do you ensure that there's no food safety risk? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Elise, are you there? Oh, it seems to be that Elise is not with us. I'm here. I, I, okay. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. No, we, we of course have many uh, rules and regulations that dictate how uh, excess food can be uh, repurposed to feed animals. Uh, there, there are regulations that are maintained at the federal level and at state level to ensure that that, that food is appropriately safe for animal feed. It, it's not oh. quite so easy as just taking your uh, plate waste and giving it to the hogs yeah okay thank you elise uh well we have uh, another question uh, to lucero 
a uh, Lucero, the, the cooperation of companies and social organizations like uh, food banks uh, was included also into the national plan. Is there any obligatory cooperation uh, forcing or is all cooperation voluntary? Okay. So right now the cooperation is voluntary. There is uh, several companies that are uh, cooperate with this uh, association of food banks, but uh, also in this national gate guidelines that were developed, it was included that uh, there is a need to uh, state that uh, um, the the need of uh, the private sector to involve more in this uh, work with uh, food loss prevention but right now everything is just voluntarily also because there is no uh, laws or uh, standards to how uh, um, handle the donated food so in colombia just have the, the the um, the guidelines of this association of food banks okay thank you thanks to you well no more questions okay uh another question for for catalan uh, Catalan, in regards to the research, knowledge, and innovation action, is Brazil engaging and building partnerships with universities in the country? Hmm. Partnerships, okay. I'm okay. Uh, of course, yes, we're thinking and establish uh, partnership with universities, but at the moment we are talking with the National Institute of Statistics because we need to have a methodology because the this National Statistics Institute is the responsible for the ODS uh, monitor. So we are studying how to do this, but of course the universities will be invited to participate. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. Well, it seems to be that uh, we have uh, no more questions and the time is uh, uh, is over. Well, uh, thank you so much, all the ladies and uh, gentlemen, for uh, your nice and, uh, and important uh, participation in this webinar. Uh, thank you for your interest and contributions. Um, uh, I hope you have enjoyed as much as I did. Uh, for me, uh, I'm, I'm very happy because of the the, the quantity of attendance uh, in this webinar. We are looking forward to having you uh, to having you again in in future webinars. Thank you so much, everybody, and uh, have a very nice day. Thank you. Bye bye.